Um, again, you know, this is afternoon. We acknowledge we are humans. We might feel in the easiest way to tackle is by making it interactive. Okay. So please stop me and ask some interesting questions, dumb questions, questions that are questions of all types of questions. Um, so let's make it at least more interactive so that we don't fall asleep. Okay. Um, I think, uh, sorry about my background, let it pass. So I'm just going to make it pass. Yeah, Kerod, Kerod, that's really okay. I think this is a new, a new world of that still is in the morning. So uh, that's. I, I I hope you are fine. I know that Hussein, who is not actually. Uh, yeah. I, I I hope you have glucose in to sustain. Sometimes that's uh, essential. Okay. Uh, let me then probably entire screen for now. And if not advised. Okay. So, You can see my screen. So again, as I said, uh, because I can't uh, hear, so what you should do, is, I can't see text if you send. If whenever someone sends text, Rodas or whoever, then academy team that's there, please just read it out for me or just uh, make sure that I, I see it. Because right now I am on another screen and I can't see unless uh, someone tells me. Okay. So I am going to start with a very brief uh, introduction, and I, I allow you to ask. So that I mean, just I want to continue with questions, and uh, that way I feel that we are active, uh, not just listening passively. Okay. So I think just maybe it's good to make everything you know in the same page. Everyone same page. Just let's talk about whenever we say what is what do we mean by web three because this is sometimes and what is web two and what is web one right so i think this hopefully most of you have a basic idea but web one was of course just the one before the digital the facebook type of world where it's much more of um, interactive and that is that was dominated by the usual static sites and that was there like in html pure and um you know a lot of that one was just another very good description for web one is it's like if you think of it as permission it was only read permission web one which means anything that you have in yahoo netscape or internet explorer if any one of you know what they mean even uh they were basically allowing you to read something to see something, right? You have your computer, there's a, you know, you have a read permission, you do that. And web two is defined by read and write. So basically not only you were uh, reading, but you were actually writing data. So that means your data is collected as cookie, cache, you know, this and that. So everything, you, your activity is writing as well. So you, reading is writing as well. And in that sense, what we call it, so the web one, if you call it information economy, web two started the platform economy. And by, by platform, that's what you would know, you know, Google Docs, you know, uh, Facebook and Twitter and all of that, that you know, YouTube, and just including, you know, the WordPress types and many other platforms. So they became the backbone of web two. And that is defined by, as I said, just, a way of thinking is that you were able to write as well as read. Um, that means information is exchanged uh, twice. That your data is, you know, it's customized a little bit. It is written, and uh, 
the person or the host, the publisher knows and um, and provides you based on, let's say, your information, either in ad, it could be ads or it could be anything. It could be your own networks. So basically, you are writing your own uh, story as well in that based on your browse, browse uh, capacity. So Web3 is in part, you can think of it as the token economy, you know, in that sense of like the information economy, platform economy. And if you think of the Web3, then you can coin it or the name, you can give it to be token economy. And in terms of read and writes, uh, kind of like this permission issue, it is actually you read, write and execute as well. So normally you were not able to execute something now your data, your browse, your activity is also actually executing uh, something special. So something that is not designed by, you know, inherently by one person, but it's something that was specified a priori uh, and you are, by visiting it, you are executing. That's kind of in a smart contract sense as well as every transaction is being executed in the blockchain. So that's, so basically, um, in Web2, just if I rephrase, users can be blocked by owners because they were not able to execute and change. Uh, and payments is managed externally, while in Web3, no one can block you or deny you access to the service because you are the one who's executing. And therefore, basically, there's no one to block you because you have more than read and write, execute as well. So basically, you are doing as you do uh, part. And payments are, of course, built in in via the native uh, token. Uh, in this case, for example, you know, Ether or Algos or others. So that's, so let me then continue. So that's, I hope then you are, we're all in the same page when we say Web 2, Web 3. And Web 3, it means is really that this is a new type of, um, it's adding execution capacity, which means giving you a pseudo uh, type of permission uh to your previous the web 2 which is basically that you are a user of some platform so and what is the blockchain technology you know it's of course it boils down it's not that complex in in its principle its principle is is identifying that records are the backbone of everything and ledgers in this case which maintains the records are basically what you can think of them as every blockchain in particular especially the bitcoin it's basically the record itself recording itself is is everything um so ledger as it's defined it's the principal book or computer file for recording and totaling financial transaction by account type with debits and credits in separate columns and the beginning uh, monetary balance and ending monetary balance for each account right so so this is basically the, the essence of it. Like it's basically the record itself is a machine. It's, you know, in the past we were thinking as, you know, we were devising tools to record, but we, under, we were underestimating that the power of record itself, recording in, a, in this way, the ledger itself is actually a machine in its own with, um, because it contains everything. So that's, we will come to that. So the ledgers are the fundamental blocks that basically you are recording something and storing that uh, in a certain way gives you basically powerful, I and mean, it's just another form of database. It's just a database, but it's another form of a database that actually becomes its compute itself as well. It contains a much more um, interesting feature and dynamic uh, nature. And so another building blocks of blockchain is contracts. Like I've been thinking earlier, I said it's just layers as one fundamental block and the other one is contracts. As contracts, I think, you know, you just like ledgers, you know, like in, if you are in a shop uh, and you are recording everything that's sold or if you, in, in any system that you are recording in contracts, you also actually, whether you are employing, you know, somebody or you are being employed by somebody that or you are actually buying something or selling something in part there is a contract and one of the the first contract that is is between the state and the the monetary value like that means like you know in ethiopia or 
uh, Kenyan shilling in in Kenya and other places or dollars in the in the rest of the world that there is a certain contract uh, really enforceable. So that means like you you know one has to pay for the bring the person who brings the the basically the the bill right. So and in that case the activities that are involved in contracts of course there must be a law a lawyer who drafts based on a certain the the country's legal uh, course and then there is going to be an auditor that's actually audits this thing whether it fulfills a certain condition and then of course then you have a um, you know paper that everybody signs you know between the two bodies and stamps are, are placed and then that becomes um uh, the contract and normally that contract is enforceable and um and if some of one of the party breaks the contract then the other party the injured uh, party could actually then uh, go into legal courts and then the arbitration will make sure that you know according to the the contract things has happened and the the difference is basically it's the same it's just the difference in the smart contract sense or when it becomes in the blockchain sense a contract now is actually a code that is written and that is being executed um as you when you instantiate that so there's going to be a predetermined it's still the same that the traditional contract and the the digital contract the blockchain contract was, must think before something happened nor after something happened that means the contract must be written before exchanging for money and house you know if you buy a house the contract must be done before you pay the the uh, money or before you receive the house right so there must be a contract phase and then after that is what happens and so the contract dicta dictates how things go and what it means when they break and the same is here the code uh, must be must have all the relevant items that what happens when something happens for example if you say the person would say if if uh, an event occurred so that event for example is a gps event that you are certain place and they pay and as long as that event happens the code which stores for example the the monetary value that was promised will be released and the person the owner of that money cannot do anything it's called a scroll account basically that the first time that happens usually the money goes or basically um it will be in, in an account that is uh, that the owner or the owner of that money cannot access and so that's basically means a fixed account or you know some some in, in the bank terminologies that that type so the all the contract basically usually does that such that when that even happens uh, according to the code basically the code after it runs you have to know in the smart contract the code almost always answers either true it either executes without error or with error or by by that means it either evaluates to true or false that's it if true happens then that's it that the what happens the next thing happens so it's actually the smart contract is really just a running of the thing and that a true either happens or a false that happens it's basically uh, um, gets into these states of the the execution and um, so it's basically that okay so normally then you know i will stop here to collect questions and reflections anyone is everything or you know are you following everything is good i have a question can you hear me yep yes i can so are we discussing uh, building blocks of web3 or are we discussing uh, blockchains i just wanted to have that clear both both so i think for me it's indistinguishable um that blockchain is basically how the blockchain works is uh, so you will see just now this is much more of the introduction of what the, the you know the building blocks of uh, contracts and um ledgers are building blocks of uh, blockchain and which which is a building block of in itself website and so it's both so the, the tech stack to web3 involves web2 as well and others for example wallets and you know apps and and all that so that but each of them for them to be component of web3 
they operate in blockchain. So in a way, you know, it's just only a hierarchy. chain artifacts it gets a little bit you know detail right so you have to understand sometimes the bigger picture at, within this case because every time you traverse hierarchies of complexity and the complex at this level is just the understanding of how the blockchain uh, is kind of like you know how it's it's there and what what elements are are connected i mean it's not like a purely non-existent it was just there and digitalized in some form and then of course improved uh, for its limitations so one of for example the usual um without blockchain what happens is of course there is almost always we never thought that's a problem but normally that's a problem as you know when you have a billion dollar um or when you are you know when you are different when you are rich or when you are you know when you are not just a normal person things becomes much more for example if you are a person that is um, let's imagine your country is a you know a dictator and you want to make sure that you are not being um let's say you want to have your own freedom you want to have your own funding structure scheme structure says that you can actually work to try to improve a system without being limited in that case for example having a third party like a bank you might not like if you if you have a way you will and this is this happens in a normal life so almost always at your level now you might think these are not relevant because you don't have the problems but just like anything when you are a kid you didn't have a problem of feeding people and um, but you grow up to become adult and then you have now a problem of feeding other people maybe helping your family right because when you were a kid you didn't so time changes and so thinking only problems at your level usually limits you from understanding others so this is one case where you have to open up for this possibility that just like you change at age your status will change where you you know you banks becomes a problem to you as well or that means a third party which is regulated becomes a problem to you even if it's not only for a criminal thing but for non-criminal for something that is very you know life-changing so in this case for example one of the, the you know the traditional way of financial transaction is that there is a third party which is called a bank normally designed and that whenever you are transact making transaction between you and another person whether you are paying or receiving money or doing something then you trust between two of you what happens with that value is that you trust the bank does the right thing and the bank always you trust the bank you know it will always do it will keep the money it will not take the money it will not change the the value if the person sends and then you are acknowledged that ten thousand is sent to you but uh, the bank doesn't take for example five thousand and at another because you, you trust the bank so that's what's called trust you trust the bank does the good work right of keeping being faithful you would not assume that the bank would steal from you that's called trust right so in this case both of you you are using that third party even if you don't sometimes think it exists it exists and it does you know a number of things but you know if you it validates entries whatever is transactioning and then it safeguards entries that whatever is transaction is written and then it preserves history records so that your money is not lost for example if a person sent you, you know, uh, five years ago, a million dollar, you know, and you were on, in a hospital, you couldn't access it, or in a prison, you couldn't access it, and you come out after 10 years, you know, that your money must be there. That's what trust is, all right? So that is exactly the type of thing that you trust. You have a very high degree of trust on the bank uh, for this to work. And that's, you know, that's the bank, that's why it is highly regulated by government so that they don't compromise that trust.
But in a case of, uh, so that's when you think of a bank, it's called a centralized ledger. So that the bank keeps this ledger. That means transactions between different uh, um, clients in a centralized manner and the database itself, it keeps it and it's the only, you know, it's the only entity that actually have access, full access to that. If a client want to access the bank, you know, they, they can't, right? Because they, at least they may have a read access, but not the, the, the right access, because that would really means the bank can't control. If they can't control, you know, nobody trusts them. So they keep in the distributed ledger sense that you have now different distributions of the same bank, maybe, uh, but, and, and there will be like a master node where actually then uh, people connect. So, what whenever we think of blockchains blockchains are decentralized and distributed so we we say two words decentralized means you know distributed as i said earlier it can be a bank can be distributed they may have different nodes distributed node and then a master node to synchronize all of them uh, while if it is decentralized then there is no even the master node so that means each node is actually a center in itself so that means it makes the decision. So it's uh, each node is both uh, the master as well as the, the worker. So in that case, we call decentralized and distributed. And so that's the figure, what you see here on, on the second and the middle and the uh, um, right part of the, okay, where is my cursor? I can't see. So I think, okay, so I think, okay. Okay, so um, in distributed, so so the key then component to solve is, you know, in the distributed system that we know it's not again new. There are many cases that you have used already that are distributed. For example, Celery is trying to distribute work, right? And and there are others you haven't looked, but every many things that are handled distributed systems. That basically means they distribute work and um, and they work. And almost always in a distributed system, there is one really big issue one to handle. That's why we usually have a master node uh, or a main node that basically makes the consensus between different workers distributed systems. And so the components so that um, like in such a way that they have the same decision, right? So that means you know, if if a main, for example, node fails, you know, they have to elect a leader or agree on the balance of, for example, you know, you, you have a distributed, a bank can have a distributed system. Now you make a, a, a purchase somewhere or a transaction some someplace, and it's written in one of the nodes. Now you move quickly to another place and you are now wanting to uh, get, you know, because money comes into your account, now, on another, in another place which accesses another node, you want to take out that, that, that cash. So unless these two different distributor systems, unless they actually have um, consensus, uh, then you will not be able to do that. And that's what's called consensus. They must, a distributor system must have a consensus system such that they actually make uh, decisions together, or that means uh, they don't conflict. So in that case, there are many, um, um, there are many, many places, many systems that are designed to actually. Uh, just one moment, I think. Let me close. Uh, okay. So you can see my screen again, right? So um, in that sense, you know, uh, 
uh, Kafka or Zookeeper and you know MongoDB itself because they they keep many 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 systems that are distributed. They actually built in a consensus system. That means they have a way of redundancy uh, in such a way that they ensure that um, they. So they ensure that actually that uh, there is consensus between the distributed systems. But all of this, you have to know, it's the main issue that they face is not actually the same as blockchain. What they face is actually, for example, that uh, a machine fails. And this usually fails not because it wants to cheat, the machine doesn't want to cheat, or the, the system administrators don't want to cheat. So this is called it's not a hostile environment. This most of this consensus we know, um, they actually are dealing with accidents, right? So accidents that happen in reality that machines fail, power cuts, and things like that. Um, and because of that, we call them even if they are consensus systems, but actually they they are not hostile. Blockchain, if you have a node and then the person in that, which is owning that node, if they can. They want to alter such that they gain profit so that's called a, a hostile environment so hostile environment means that anyone has a selfish interest of changing it so because even if they keep a distributed part but actually it's not like one company owning everything it's multiple companies or multiple people own it and they have a very special interest you cannot control so by definition you must assume because you can't control you must assume they are almost always working for themselves to change it if it benefits them and that really is the problem so that's that's why in blockchain because it's it works on consensus system in a hostile environment that makes it very different from other traditional you know um, distributor systems like uh, zookeeper right because zookeeper or whatever you call it has a company that probably takes care of them and you know they don't want they don't have intention to change it because it will compromise so therefore i think i have designed i've defined all of this what is you know centralized decentralized distributed and within distributed that distributed systems need consensus and within consensus i've defined as well what is a hostile environment and what is a normal environment and why blockchain is a distributed, decentralized, and hostile environment to consensus system. So that if you understand that, that means you really understand now what and the property of blockchain, right? Then we go into the other component that makes blockchain work, right? So before I start that, do you have questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Yeah, go. Maybe uh, if we could just get a little more explanation about uh, a hostile and consensus. I didn't understand that property of uh, blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. So normally, you know, consensus means whenever you have a distributed Maybe system. to add a question. Huh? Sorry. Apologies. Maybe to make a, a yeah. more clearer question. Uh, when we said they, they were they were distributed, uh, we mentioned that there are nodes and they are they don't really have they're all a master and a worker right yes so and then we when we say consensus what what are we actually saying do they have a data are we what making, consensus are we making, consensus mean let, let's define consensus means when you have now two systems and one information may exist in one node only now that information must exist in the other nodes as well for them to to make to agree right imagine uh where two systems two nodes start that yababal has an account and both of them agree that they have an account and they agree that uh yababal in his account has ten dollars right so that's the start that's called a state they start from that state let's imagine now after one day i make in one node i change because something uh, you know that I am connected to that not I somebody uh, sends me another ten dollars right now I have twenty dollars in one note and the other note I have only ten 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 dollars now I want to withdraw from like let's call it the node B which I actually transaction happened and it's the state is twenty dollars 
And in, in, in node A, that I want to withdraw cash from that. And I want to withdraw $20. Of course, node A would say like, no, you don't have that account or you don't have that amount. So that means for them, for this to work, they must have con there must be consensus, which means that irrespective of the node I connect, they must make the same decision, right? So that's what's called consensus. And normally that happens through synchronization. And the synchronization happen normally using a, ma a main node, right? So everybody should connect. Almost always there is one head that actually is like in Zookeeper, for example, the node, you know, the, it doesn't matter uh, who, who is the head, but there must be at least one head that makes, connects with everyone, updates with everyone uh, within a certain amount of time, right? And in database, the same, like databases, you can write, you can have multiple connections, but they must have a consensus system internally to for, for it to actually happen, right? So those are called consensus. So in a normal bank, the central bank or the head makes that consensus uh, part. In distributed system, you must solve it if you don't want to have a head to elect a leader that makes those decisions, then that you need a different system. That's what blockchain is invented for. To make consensus between distributed and decentralized uh, systems. And the algorithm of blockchain is exactly to solve that. Does that answer your question? No? Does that it make, is it clearer? So by hostile and non-hostile, it really means that in a distributed system of like, you know, the traditional way that we know, like software systems, they are actually, they are distributed through a due memory or, you know, to increase memory or to increase computation speed. And if there is failure, um, you, you will always expect failure. That's why distributed systems have uh, that built in. But you don't expect the failure was to to game you or hack you, or that it's not only a failure. You don't expect that data will be corrupted um, in a very hostile way. So that means you will only assume that data will be corrupted in a certain manner. Like let's say the the system fails, but not in a hostile sense that someone would actually change intentionally and whatever you do, it will be trying to game you. It's like you know, it's not a hacker that owns your, your database. In this case, it's the hacker. You must assume every owner of the node is a hacker. And that means it's trying to hack and benefit itself. So you must assume that to really understand what blockchain's problem is. You can assume everyone who keeps a, a node is a hacker. And they really, really, if benefits them, they will hack it and change it. So you have to solve this. You have to come up with an algorithm that handles that. Is that clear now? Uh, can I get a feedback? Is that clear or? Okay, because I can't see, so that means I am assuming that's it. Okay. Please, yeah, please, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I have a quick question regarding the same thing uh, is to know. Yeah. If uh, when you were explaining, what I have understood is uh, when we talk about con consensus protocols, it means that uh, we, we, we are trying to talk about the protocol that verify uh, the transaction yes. that happened in the blockchain. Yes, yes. Uh, am so I right? I haven't, still, yes, you are right. I haven't talked still okay. about the consensus. I'm just talking about you need a consensus and blockchain solves that. And then I, I'm coming to that. Exactly. Abraham. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, I don't think she remains on one. Okay. Yeah. When we oh, talk about uh, okay, when we talk about uh, decentralized, does it mean uh, is decentralized mean also distributed? And uh, I don't know if uh, I have the if there is they a different. They are given different. distributed and decentralized are different. Decentralized uh, means that there is no hate. Like. Okay. It's, they, they, it's distributed means that there are workers in distributed, right? So it doesn't tell about whether there is a head or not. Decentralized tells you there's no head. So there isn't one central head. So it's basically decentralized and 
it means has no head and it is distributed because you can have decentralized but not distributed and distributed but not decentralized so blockchain is both decentralized and dis uh, distributed okay cool yeah? Uh, is, yeah are there any example of those when maybe we have a decentralized but not distributed and uh, distributed but yeah. not decentralized um i think it's basically um multiple banks you can consider them as decentralized i mean just for now i'm out of pure i want to go faster um, but distributed is everything. Like, for example, salary that you are doing is distributed, right? So you can have multiple machines running a different part of a code that's distributed. But they all, for example, a trade, the main trade can be um, can be just considered the 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 center. Now, if you are computing multiple trades and in different com computers, that one you can consider them as decentralized and dis uh, distributed as well. So I think you really can think of by decentralized means decisions happen at multiple places. And it, the computation can happen only in one place. So there is only one place in the computation, but you actually have the outcome of different decisions happen in different centers, you know, and distributed uh, distributed is the other side. You have distributed computing, but decisions may happen in one center. Right? So I think any system, I think there are millions of examples, so you can search it. I think even daily life, so many things are um, distributed, you know, like kind of like um, even governments work in a certain in certain countries as distributed, you know, and that means that diff but then there is a central government. So do you have a central government that uh, dictates, or for certain tasks, actually the different regions have their own decision making body, and that in that case it's distributed, uh, so or decentralized. So distributed and decentralized if they make their own decision as well as they operate under in their own then you say they are decentralized and uh, distributed and if they have to make consensus because one person owns like registers a business in one region and they still can be considered to own the the object um, in another uh, region so then you say there is a consensus between them yeah, I hope that makes sense. And if not, like, I mean, you can discuss it. It should be easy to find examples. Okay, okay. Uh, Abraham. Thank you. Uh, actually, Rudolf already asked my questions. I was going to ask uh, the core difference between the uh, decentralized and distributed. Actually, it's already answered. Thank you. Okay. You can Great. move to the next. Alexander right. or other, uh, are there any questions in the hands? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure if uh, I've got it. Um, so in order for all of them to um, to work together, um, you we need consensus, as you said. But yeah. does that mean that every node has every data? And wouldn't that just in be too much is. data? Wouldn't that just be like, yes. I mean, if you keep if you keep historical data, yeah, everybody has along every, with everybody everybody like, data. Huh? Yes, yes, everybody must have everybody's data, and that's called a full node and a light node, whatever. That's more to simplify, but there must be the same data everywhere. The same data is everywhere in a certain way, and there must be a, uh, an algorithm in the system that that uniformizes or synchronizes. So yes. Oh, okay. Um, is too much so we'll data? Do? Oh, I don't know, but yeah, it, you know, don't, don't, you know, the, it doesn't matter. But that's why they keep it. For example, Bitcoin is really only a few bytes um, per, per 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 block. 
And if you count for all the blockchain exchanges, like in Bitcoin still maybe is not, let's say some terabytes more. It is a very small still because it's text based and you don't store. That's why you don't store things in blockchain because you want to really make it very, very light. Um, and for that reason, Ethereum is much, much bigger in terms of the amount of data than, for example, Bitcoin and things like that. So yes, it's a lot of data, but you know, who cares? The world it operates what is possible, not based on, you know, saving data memory. And of course, design helps you to elevate that, but yeah, okay. Um, Alexander, I assume, um, so uh, yeah, it's basically, of course, we, we sometimes count uh, actually really separate systems. I mean, if they, you know, in, uh, this is called randomness, like you must ensure that it's random um, and it will always be random if it's adopted well. So that's why a blockchain that's not adopted well, or there are only two nodes is of course a problem because those people know each other and they might they might actually change something right so it has to be adopted uh, to make sense okay so let me proceed um because i think these are much more now we start to the the you know the smaller details so of course the very 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 key and every every everything that you know about in the wave that is working whether you call it um, SSL, you know, just your HTTPS, or whether you call it SSH, anything that's secure the system works because the, the mathematical principle allows us, and that is called cryptography. And the cryptography basically is, you know, all the research since the 1980s and before that as well, it's trying to create something called a private key and a public key in such a way that the public key can be shared, but based once when you hash something, uh, you and, and you have a, a data that is sent that is hashed by the private key, and you have the public key yourself. You don't have the, the private key, but you have a public key, and you have a message that is coded with the uh, private key. Now, using the public key, you will be able to decipher to to know exactly this comes from that private key, and this is the practical truth that allows us to do all of it. So if you really, everything that you can think of is made because of this principle, that the crypto, the cryptographic principle. And really what it really means is that, that you can go from private key to public key, to mathematically what is called elliptic curve multiplication. And what really this elliptic curve multiplication, what it does is that you generate from, the, the private key is anything any order of numbers of text, you know, ASCII characters, whatever characters you want. It has nothing got to do with any, it's any random stuff, right? Private key, we call it private key because it's the star, the difference from that private key and some really A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Y, J that I just called, that can be also a private key. But the only difference is that now, if the public key is used for, you know, for, for something else, then I call it a private key. So don't think of private key as anything other than just some combination of random. But once that generates a public key and, and then that public key is shared, if you lose the private key, you lose everything that you have sent through that is, is lost, right? So the private key basically is, you know, it's random to start with. It has no meaning in itself, but it will have meaning once it the public key is shared and that data is hashed by it or that means that you hash something with it and because once you hash that thing the only way um to every time to communicate is through that private key just like that like ssh key ssh key is also the same private key public key component and what and the reason the really why mathematically it was proven it would take millions of years of for any this, the biggest computer even in the world, in the classical computer, um, to go to randomly try to, to go from public key to private key. So it's almost impossible. It's not only almost, it's impossible to go from public key to private key. Quantum computers are slightly different. People are trying to solve also the same private key, public key generation that cannot be broken as well by um, quantum computers. But 
so far has been only in the classical computers. But what really makes it that from private key, you generate public key and that you cannot, anyone, you can share your public key, but no one can go to reconstruct your private key because of the mathematical nature of it. And, and every time you hash something, one knows that's you by using the message that you sent and the public key. It's again the property of this, this mathematics that they can actually then know exactly if the two, if the public key was generated by the private key, then it will it will read the message. No one else, no one else can uh, can read that message, right? So that's basically it's a verification process. So that is now to go from public key, which is just what you share to the world. Sometimes just so that also to add a next layer of privacy, instead of changing uh, only sharing public key, you can. But in blockchain, there is also another layer. Of you hash your public key to create what you call Bitcoin address or basically blockchain address. That's just another hashed version of your public key. Goes through a certain process, and then you create uh, a certain 58 um, uh, bits or you know 20 bytes or 160 bits information or key, what is considered as your address in a blockchain. Basically, um, because Every every blockchain which creates your bit address knows from that also to go to decipher your message. Um, so that's basically that's exactly uh, the case. And this is the heart and heart. And I cannot overemphasize. This is it. This is just one one like innovation of blockchain, right? So the heart of everything. Not only in blockchain, actually in all in all secure transmission and and trans. Uh, transactions okay even banks use that everybody uses that but it's also the heart of blockchain oh so, um and how you know i would um go into just a simple demo that um do i have this is not here it's generated here so there is i shared with you this um this one uh you can play just to have a to have a feeling of and it's also in the slide so you you also have the slide that is shared so that basically um you basically whenever i have something you know the empty part is hashed like that this is the empty part of it just a simple even an empty string can be hashed because it's just uh, so this sha 2056 256 hash which bitcoin uses is basically hash everything so if i send a message uh anyways d to himself and selfish then you see like the message this one is hashed in this form right so it's basically this this hash is collisionless it's basically whatever you write it's basically you generate a hash and that's basically the content of what is a hash means and a block is a series of hash. So if I look at one block, so and I choose nuance, I will come later to that. And you add data. So transaction uh, TR1, TR2, TR3. So this is the data. Now, but to because a block is not just a simple hash, but it has to solve. A block is actually you add something together to hash it in such a way that you have to have n zeros um, so in this case for example let's mine it so that's called mining so the real mining is a normal hash of this data is actually this one you have seen it um, you have seen it earlier so whatever data i add it's not it's not mined it means in blockchain sense it's just a simple hash but the, the hash to be mined means to add some you know to add this is a difficulty to add something in such a way that some zeros that the difficulty level dictates how many zeros how many the big the starting uh, value of the hash must be n zeros so let's mine it and see so when we mine and you see that now this nuance we we search it for this nuance such that the the first four digits are actually zeros that's called mining mining is with a difficulty sometimes the difficulty is 30 zeros that in the beginning that's called really you know bitcoin now is about between 30 and you know between 25 to 35 
uh, digits of the beginning must be zero. It is searching that nuance, this part, that makes this hash, when you hash it together, it converts this hash into the first n, n digits are zero, right? So that's really what is called a mine, you know, just when we are mining, okay? So, and blockchain is basically, uh, I am fast, I'm going fast because, you know, uh, I needed to go, so I'm trying. So blockchain means, now when you are hashing, so the first chain, you, you first block, you know, you have a data, you have a nuance that you search, that actually the, you know, the previous one was this, we started from a previous one, and the hash is zero, it's mined. Now, this one is also mined because, and then it's mining not only itself as before, but it also mines by taking the previous, the previous block hash. So the previous block hash was, as you can see here, one, uh, four zeros and one five seven, as you can see, four zeros and one five seven, right? So this is called, now you are hashing, you're creating chain because you are adding the previous blocks hash as data to the next one. And then you hash them together, you search for that, and like that, and like that, and like that. So that's called the blockchain, okay? So you start from a hash, you go to, you create a block, and when another block, you know, the next block takes the hash of the previous block, then it becomes a chain, okay? And distributed means basically, now you have peer A that has its own block, you know, as you see, peer B, it is another block, and PSC is the same. And of course, in principle, you want them to have consensus uh, between them. And tokens are, again, um, it's basically what defines in this transaction. And the transaction defines what actually token you have. And this is basically, in, in Bitcoin, the transaction itself, the, the, the last remaining part is your, your value. It's basically courage uh, that actually shows how much token do you have, how much Bitcoin do you have. Really refers to the the final, you know, transact, you know, the final basically uh, balance is what is your 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 kind of token value or Bitcoin you own. So that's basically it. You can play with this, you know, and um, this year. And I think I'm I'm just rushing. I know, but this is the fundamental concept of blockchain, but I'm coming to the more detail of it. Abraham, do you have a question? Oh, it's a mistake. Okay. Abraham? Um, my question is, like, I don't really get the distributed part, you said. There is peer one, peer two, and then things like that, but I don't get to understand it. Can you go over it again if you have the time? Which, which one? Which uh, one? The distributed part. Which one? Yeah. Okay. So then you mean on the on the day, on this one? Yes. 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 Okay. So so here basically, as you can see, so the the first peer contains. 157 and the second peer is also contains 157 peer a and peer b these are distributed you know these different nodes so that means there is they are in consensus block two is also um they have block the same block in block two and in block three the same right now imagine i am i want to change imagine there was a transaction here that is contains me someone sends me ten dollar in this block but i want to make sure given that bitcoin you know it ultimately it's how the last transaction uh, that is remaining is my account i want to add one uh, something for me like let's say instead of ten dollars let me assume that someone sent me actually a thousand dollars or you know bitcoin and instead of like one bitcoin let me add that one to be hundred so let's imagine I added one. Now, you see? Now, the first part is it's not only broken here it, because it, the, the hash is not broken. Even if I mine it, I mine such that this is zero, this block is green. 
but the other blocks which hashes this are are difficult so i can ha i have to go and mine this one too so let's imagine i am i am mining it um so this one too But actually, because I mine this, it's broken. So I, it doesn't allow me to mine. Uh, I mean, it, it mines, but I have to mine every of this, right? Now, I have to go, and if there are millions, I have to mine. Of course, this is computationally very expensive, but I am. I, let me assume I mined my own, I edited that, right? So this is the block that I contained, but because I changed uh, some data in the beginning, I mined. Now, Peer A has now, as you can imagine, it's peer A's uh, block one has four zero and 89. Peer B has four zero and one five. You see, now they have to reject. Peer C has the same as peer B, peer B. And therefore, we now don't have consensus because our, our blocks are very different. So that is why in distributed system that basically consensus must agree. And given that, I, I, you know, I am the outline. Normally, it's considered, you know, that I am the outlier. I will be rejected, so they will be trusted. And and this is the simple hand waving, but there is a much more algorithm that says which one you cannot do this. So then, that's what really blockchain is in a distributed sense. Because if I had the only one, if I am centralized, and if I'm the only one who have that, I would have edited, and you know, I would cheat. Does that make sense now? Brahan? Okay, great. So let me proceed. So you can play with that, okay? So in blockchain, what are transactions and blocks? Blocks you have seen. So how blocks are started is that many clients, including you and I, can make transactions. We can buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin, and all of that, right? So all of those transactions would be on would be in a called in a unconfirmed unordered transactions and their miners as i as i said earlier select a subset of this on the right side i am i'm sorry that my um my uh mouse is not working so i cannot show you but in the in the cloud sense these are all transactions that are coming from different people transacting happening and miners select a subset of them there is no order, just they choose only who, who reward this a lot. They, they choose based on that, and then they basically try to mine. And, and then there is the, the first person who mines, because it's computationally expensive. The first person who mines gets the reward and goes on and adds it into the block. That's how it goes. So a blockchain basically is formed because people are mining. So whenever you think of Bitcoin mining and all that mining is exactly solving uh, earlier, as I said, finding the first n digits to be zero, right? That's what uh, mining is, because you are searching for a number that makes that, and that's what you proof of work. I am again, and so in blockchain, a block element actually then, um, in Bitcoin sense, it, it has very, very, but this is, you know, I'm not, it's not an example. This is exactly what Bitcoin is, right? So it basically has, any block has, uh, end data so the first data is the version of that then a hash of the previous hash and then a merkle root hash this is basically all the transactions that are in that block will be stored in a merkle tree so basically that tree is the transaction will be at the bottom and then they form a tree until they have the first the basically the node the, the one node that's on top the hash of that is called the merkle you know the tree is called merkle tree and then the hash of that is called the Merkel root hash. That is also in the block. And then a timestamp and a nuance. That means what solves that block. Uh, I say just the nuance is that digit some number that makes you know the hash to be the first digits of the hash have some zero. And then the target of difficulty is how many zeros earlier I described uh, are described by the, the difficulty level. Okay. And this is every block. If you examine Bitcoin, that's exactly what you get. That's it. Nothing more. Okay, so that's that's block blockchain in Bitcoin, and basically these blocks are existing, and because the transactions are stored in Merkle tree, that's it. In the block, it's stored somewhere. Um, so whenever you have when you download all the block, the blocks of uh, Bitcoin, you get of course the 
including the hash, the Merkle tree as well for each block. And basically, you have blockchain. You know, basically, that's why everybody can download that. Okay. So that is that is what is blockchain in the Bitcoin sense. I mean, nothing more, nothing less. This is it. And in a, that is Bitcoin. Ethereum has a slightly different because Ethereum wants to have smart contract. Bitcoin doesn't have all of that possibility. And because Ethereum wants to, be, to do more, you know, then it has a slightly different structure. And a block of, uh, so a block of, um, so just give me one minute, sorry. and so unfortunately i have to go i will continue but the the ethereum is slightly different because it stores multiple things also it has account it has states and all that will continue but um it's this is much more of an introduction hopefully you can go through yourself you can check the different um um uh, parts of uh, this presentation and tomorrow i will continue just uh, in the beginning of in the morning and hopefully uh, you have gotten now an idea. And I'm sorry that I have to go in the time. That's why I, I, I started earlier. But please keep these questions. Please post these questions to Slack so that we don't forget it tomorrow. And uh, hopefully, though, it highlights what is actually blockchain and you know the way to think. OK, thanks so much. And um, yeah, I will connect tomorrow. Cheers, guys, and sorry for early um, leaving.